Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. Um, in this video, I'm just going to do a little run through of what Ackerman is for steering systems, but kind of more importantly, because I'm not going to go too much into depth as to what Ackerman is, I'm just going to really show you how it relates to my Baja, the chassis that I'm building, and how I'm going to deal with it. And I guess mainly the whole purpose for this video is as in my last video, I've been working on the front suspension. Most importantly, I've been working on the steering for it, and I'm running into a little bit issue with bump steer, and to rectify that, I need to change the height and the position of this a little bit, and possibly change the orientation of it or the position of it at my steering rack here. And in doing that, I was going to disrupt the Ackerman a little bit, and a lot of guys had comments on that and I want to go over it so that we're all on the same page as to how the Ackerman is now and what would happen to it if I made it worse or better. So essentially I'm not going to try and sit here and explain to you exactly the like the definition of Ackerman but what Ackerman is 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 when a vehicle turns makes a turn this this is the vehicle right here these are the the two rear tires and these are the two front tires. This is center line of the chassis. This is the front axle. This is the rear axle. If a vehicle's making a turn, let's say it's making a left-hand turn, you know, as it makes that turn, the, two, the wheel on the inside here technically needs to make a tighter turn than the wheel on the outside, just because this wheel is going to be making a smaller arc than the wheel on the outside. Now, if you had basically a one-to-one -one steering ratio and both wheels turned the same amount, that would work. You would make the turn, but because the angles would be the same, one of those wheels would have to scrub or slide or whatever you want to call it. It would kind of be like making a turn without a differential. So Ackerman is geometry involved that allows it so when the tires turn, if you can see here, the inside tire is actually turning at more of an angle than the outside tire. So now as you go around that turn, the inside, technically if this is set up perfectly, they're both riding on the proper arc and there's no scrubbing whatsoever because they go right around. There's a lot of different ways to come up with the correct Ackerman. There's some really intimidating formulas out there which I don't understand and I'm not even going to try to understand. But I can tell you, it's a general rule of thumb. If you take the intersection point of the center line of your chassis and your rear axle, that being your pivot point, and come up and draw a line through your ball joints, which would be right here, that line represents a very, very good starting point for your Ackerman. So you can see on this setup, that's what I've done. I've drawn lines from this pivot point down here right up through the ball joint, and then I just picked a random point on that line, and that's what I made my pivot points. And then this is my steering link. There would technically be a steering rack or what have you in here, but for this example, just a solid bar will work fine. And then you can see that that works out really well. This is exaggerated, but you can see that when it turns, the, t the tire on the inside is making a tighter turn. And that's really good Ackerman. This would be, this would be a good setup. And you can see that it works either way. Now, my Baja, you see I've got rear steer written on here because the steering components are to the rear of the front axle. My Baja is what they call a front steer. My um, steering linkage and all that is in the front. And if you look, the line that I drew through here actually goes the opposite direction of where my ball joints connect on my spindle. So that would be horrible Ackerman. So let's do this. I'm going to change this up and I'm going to put a tie rod bar on the front here and I'm, I'm going to put it where the ball joints would fall right in line with the Ackerman. Okay, now we've changed this up so we're, we no longer have a rear steer setup. We've got a forward steer setup. However, I've put our ball joints or our pivot point still in line with the correct Ackerman layout. So if we turn this, it still works properly just like it did when we had the rear steer. The tire that's on the inside of the turn is making a tighter turn than the one to the outside. 
So you can do forward steer like this and it works without any problem. However, if you look at an actual spindle setup like this, in order to do that, if you had a line drawn like this, going back to the intersection of the rear axle, it would come through like this. Which means that this pivot point would be somewhere out here and obviously that would intersect with your brake rotor. That's why on a front steer like this, you can't really set it up properly because you would be in you would be colliding with your rotor. So what we end up doing in situations like that is like this is we or at least I created a an offset similar to how it would have been if it was a rear steer just like this. But let's take a look at what that does to my Ackerman. Okay, so what I've got here is I still have it set up for forward steer, but I've before where I was using this as a pivot point, which is right in line with the correct Ackerman geometry. Now I've created a point out here, which would be, this is still highly exaggerated from how it actually is, but this is gonna represent what's happening to my steering because on the chassis I'm building and on my Baja I'm driving, I'm way off of the Ackerman. So now, if you notice, we're getting the complete opposite effect of what we want. I'm turning to the left, yet my outboard wheel is making a tighter turn than the inside wheel. Now, you know, this is gonna work. It, it's gonna work. It's gonna make the turn. However, there's gonna be significant scrubbing or sliding, whatever you wanna call it, because either this outside wheel is going to have to slide a lot as it goes around the turn or this inside wheel is going to have to slide a lot. Whichever one gets the most traction is going to win. Now the weirdest part about that is that that's how the Baja that I drive right now is. This Baja right now, which I have taken apart, but you'll find out why in a second here, is also forward steer, just like to the, the chassis that I'm building now. And again, if we created a line through the ball joints through to the rear axle, the pivot point would have to be somewhere out here. Obviously, I didn't make this spindle, I bought this spindle. They've uh, put it out here kind of as far as they can, but you can only go so far because you'll run into the brake rotor. That being said, in the last two years that I uh, played with this Baja, some of it was on the street because this is street legal. I can drive it on the street and I've driven it into town and, and all that stuff. And I've also driven it on the dirt. And not once did I ever have any issues with turning. It doesn't feel like it binds up. It doesn't fight you at the steering wheel. It doesn't do any of that stuff. Like if I wouldn't have proven to myself how bad the Ackerman is, I would have never even known that it actually had horrible Ackerman. Now, one thing that definitely contributes to that is the fact that this is a rear engine Baja and the front end is extremely lightweight. It's so lightweight that when I'm on the dirt, if I'm under power, it doesn't even barely steer. In order to steer, I usually have to let off the throttle to get a little bit of weight into the front or this Baja has steering brakes. So if I really need to steer, I can pull the steering brakes and get it to bite in a little bit harder. So it would be my guess that even though the Ackerman isn't very good, the front end is just so light that it kind of doesn't really matter. It would probably be a different scenario if this was um, some sort of a vehicle, maybe a, a truck or something that had a V8 sitting up front and you had all that weight on your front axle. Or if you had a track car where it's really important in the turns that you're not forcing you know, one of your tires to lose traction or anything like that. In those situations, you probably have to pay a lot closer attention to your Ackerman. Now, just so that I can get a little bit better idea of how bad the Ackerman is on this actual Baja compared to how it is on that little uh, cheat sheet that I made, I've got both wheels pulled off of the Baja here and I've got this piece of steel, which I'm really just gonna use as a straight edge. And right now I've got her sitting straight. And right now my uh, front spindle here is at essentially 90 degrees to this bar. And this bar is just representing a solid axle going through the front end. And I'm just gonna hop up in the Baja. I'm going to turn it all the way to a left hand turn. 
just by literally grabbing the wheel and turning it. That's full lock. And now I'm gonna measure the angle of this one and I'm gonna go measure the angle on the other side so we can see how, how off they are. All right, now I'm just gonna eyeball this, but I think for what we're trying to accomplish, we're just trying to get a rough idea. This will be effective enough. I'm just trying to find out if this is wildly inaccurate or if it's fairly close. All right, this wheel here is at 29 degrees, and this is the one that should be the higher number because this wheel will be on the inside of the turn. All right, now this one, which is the outside wheel, is at 31.6, let's call that 31 and a half degrees. So there's a two and a half degree difference between the uh, Ackerman on this side to the Ackerman on the other side. Two and a half degrees, I don't think is a lot, and that was at full lock. That's probably why I've never actually like felt it biting or anything like that. Um, I think the Ackerman, the way I have it set up right now on the new chassis would probably be a little bit worse because I think I have my pivot is a little bit more inboard. Um, it definitely doesn't worry me or bother me, certainly on this spindle setup that it's a little bit off. Um, it's not something that I'm going to try to change or anything like that because like I said, until I really delved into it, I never even noticed that it was off. But I did want to show you guys the difference between forward steer, rear steer, and what I'm dealing with on the Ackerman and what I'm kind of trying to engineer with the new chassis and the new spindles. I will say this, that this little exercise has made me change my ideas a little bit on this spindle, whereas before I was just going to change this and move this more inboard and not make any changes to my steering rack. Even though a lot of you guys were saying or recommending that I make changes to the steering rack, I was saying that I didn't want to. Even though I'm not necessarily trying to get this chassis perfect, I am trying to get it pretty darn good, um, especially because I've got a lot of you guys watching me and I don't want to seem like a butcher, so I want to try to do what I can to get it as good as possible. So in the next video, which is going to be more about making this, uh, the steering changes needed on this front end, um, I've come up with some ideas so that I will at least, I can't say that it'll have perfect Ackerman because I don't think that's really possible with this setup, but it's going to be a lot better than it is now. So thanks for watching the video guys, no fabrication in this one, just me going over some Ackerman stuff. Uh, in the next one, like I said, we'll be working on the front steering. Hopefully you're taking something away from this and it's motivating you guys to get out, work on your own stuff, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.